So we'll start from the example of the purchasing system. Okay. The main stages in the purchasing cycle are as follows. So this is the cycle. Okay. This is the purchasing system cycle. Okay. So first we'll start like this. So assume you are the uh, purchase manager. Okay. So what happens? If you are the purchase manager, you will get a requisition from so many employees. It can be a HR manager uh, or an admin manager or a production manager. Okay. From so many managers, you will get a requisition. Requisition for what? For purchase. Okay. It can be, uh, it can be like uh, uh, 10,000 papers. Okay. Or it can be like office furnitures or it can be raw materials or like that. So for simple case, we'll take that production manager wants to buy raw materials, which is a regular activity. Okay. So he wants to buy a uh, raw materials for his department. Okay. So the production manager gives a requisition to the purchase manager. Purchase manager will go and search for suppliers. Once he has found a supplier, okay, he will give an order saying that we want this many raw materials to our company. Okay. So once he has given an order, the goods will be received with the good okay the bill will also be received so the purchasing manager okay what he will do is he will sign the bill okay he will sign the bill that the bill has been received and he will also record that this many goods have come to the business so he has to count the goods or weight the goods he has to do something and he has to ensure that the goods in the bill okay the goods which are mentioned in the bill and the actual goods which have come are same okay they should be of same quality number of units should be perfect okay it should be the correct item so once all are perfect then he will say yes okay he will he will respond to the uh, supply saying that yes we have received the goods and everything is like perfect and we'll make the payment as per the agreement okay the agreement would have been made before itself okay uh, the agreement would have been made before itself something like we'll pay after 10 days we'll pay after 20 days like that okay so he will record that we will pay after 20 days once he, he has says that that will be sent to the accounting department for the payment and finally a payment is made from the accounting department okay so look at here the material was required by production department okay but all these activities were carried by the purchase department okay the goods might even be received by warehouse department okay and finally the payment is made by accounting department okay See, there are like so there are like four parties involved, four departments within our company are involved, and one party who is the supplier, he is also involved. So all these five dep four departments and the supplier have to coordinate, okay, and finally they have to uh, execute the order here. Okay. It might sound confusing, but the thing is, when if you are a big company, okay, this ensures that the company slow, flows smoothly in its process okay because if you take a company like Marji Suzuki just imagine a company like Marji Suzuki for producing one car they have they need to coordinate with around some 50 suppliers okay because they have to buy tires horn okay seats electrical parts okay uh, any leather parts plastic parts okay engine okay there are so many technical parts there so imagine the so many companies here so, Marji Suzuki buys so many items on a regular basis, but still they are able to smoothly run their company. How they are able to smoothly run their company, paying their suppliers properly, okay? How they are able to do is because they have a beautiful process. Once you have created a process, it automatically runs on itself, okay? And it's quite easy to check it also. So, the main stages in the purchasing cycle and the issues to be considered are as follows. So we'll start from here. Requisition. Staff decide what goods services they wish to purchase and produce a purchase requisition. Okay, whichever department wants a good, they have to raise a purchase requisition. This is authorized by the department supervisor. Okay, the, usually the department manager. So assume that production department wants some goods. The employee, production employee has to tell the production manager. Production manager will authorize it. Okay, and sign it. And then that will go to the purchasing department okay so this ensures that not all employees can uh, ask for goods okay not all employees can ask for purchase only the relevant managers can issue the purchase request okay so employees can only ask but manager only has to approve okay 
so once this has been done so once this has been done okay signed by the production manager it is passed on to the purchasing department so purchasing department what they do is department places an order with the supplier okay before making an order to the supplier he usually gets several quotations from many suppliers okay whoever gives the lowest price with the reasonable quality they will buy from them okay order may be authorized especially if for a large order okay usually the purchasing manager should authorize it okay if it's a amount beyond his level okay then it has to be approved by a higher authority someone like a general manager or a ceo like that so once this has been done the goods will be like received by the warehouse department goods should be inspected to ensure that they are in good condition and the quality is correct a record should be kept of all goods received okay so warehouse will know how many goods have been received okay how many uh, units or products have been received and how many are dispatched to the production department okay so they also have a check and balance mechanism so the next one is invoice received okay with the goods the supplier also sends the bill okay before recording the accounts checks are made to ensure that goods were received and that the price is correct okay so when the goods are received the warehouse manager will say that uh, yes the, we have received all these goods okay and he will tell it to the purchase manager purchase manager once he uh, once he gets this confirmation from warehouse manager he will then pass the bill to the accounts department recorded in company's accounting system manual or computerized so once the bill has been received goods are correct then the bill is given to the accounts department accounts department once it has received the bill okay they are not going to check anything because what they will do is they trust the warehouse manager and the purchase manager they will simply make the payment this will be approved for payment by a senior manager who will first check that the details on the check agree with the invoices so the name of the uh, of the supplier okay has to match with the name give, name written in the check and the amounts are also matching so once all these are matching he will sign and finally the bill will be sent to the or sorry the check will be sent to the customer okay so this is the purchasing system so let's look at how this works for the sale system okay so this is how the sales cycle works okay the order uh, the customer gives us an order okay we process the order then we check whether the customer is like reliable okay if it's the, if it's a cash sales we can di di directly we can make it if it's going to be credit sales we have to check the records whether he is a uh, <clears throat> whether he has any pending due or not if he doesn't have much of a pending due then we can <clears throat> process it the goods are then uh, then we sell the send the invoice copy okay we send the invoice copy to the warehouse so the warehouse department will then send the uh, goods okay as well as the bill to the customer so once the customer acknowledges that the goods have been received okay it will be recorded in accounts and finally the payment for the good will be received by the company okay so that's how about the sales system so we'll see it in uh, detail depending on the business orders may be received by telephone in person or electronically a record should be made of incoming orders so that a check can be made that they have all been processed okay so we will receive orders in different manners okay however it comes we have to ensure that they are recorded first properly okay because if we miss a call or if we miss a mail then that sale is not at all happening so we have to record these properly first so once it has been recorded okay you ensure that the customer has a valid credit account or has already paid cash if it's a cash customer we don't need to worry if he's a credit customer then we have to find out whether <coughs> how much of credit balance he already has has he like crossed the limit or is he like still uh, and is he a good customer or not okay whether he has made a prompt payment earlier or not all these things we have to check then only we can make a we can agree to sell the goods okay we should also check in terms of with the warehouse whether the goods are existing or not okay we cannot pay we cannot promise that the goods are will be sent okay without having in hand we cannot make that kind of a promise we should have the goods and then only we could 
send it to the customer. So we have to check in the warehouse whether the goods are available. And confirmation, an order confirmation may be sent to the customer detailing when the goods will be dispatched. Okay. So once the goods are available and the customer is good or he has paid in cash, then we can simply dispatch the goods. So once the goods are dispatched, a document called a goods dispatch note, okay, or a GDN is produced, which will be signed by the customer confirming that the goods were received in good condition. So this GDN note is sent to the customer. He has to sign it. Okay. Goods will be given to him and this copy will be, will be taken by the employee and given to the, to the warehouse department. So warehouse department will note that goods have been received by the customer. Okay. Once this good received note has been, dispatch note has been received by the warehouse department, he will, the warehouse manager will send it to the uh, sales manager okay that the goods have been dispatched okay so once that is like uh, has happened okay sales manager will inform the accounts team okay accounts department that uh, that a sales has happened okay goods have been like uh, uh, sent okay and cash has been received and like that if it's going to be a credit then he will tell that a credit sales have been made okay the invoice is coded and entered into the accounts and <clears throat> after all this process if it's going to be a credit okay a check might be like received from the customer okay so we have to check whether the balance which is due by the customer and the check amount are both tally so for example if he has like 10000 rupees of uh, credit he has taken okay and he has like given us only 8000 rupees check we have to tell them 8000 has been received as check 2000 is still pending balance okay so we have to make a record of it controls should be in place to ensure that the staff are not in a position to misappropriate the payment okay so staff should not take away the check and run and they should not like deposit it in their account okay so it should be a cross the check okay the credit controller con contacts those customers who are late in paying okay so if there are any customers who are paying at a very late time we have to follow up them okay so this is about the sales system <clears throat> so this is the final uh, system that we are going to look at here okay it's called as a payroll system so if a company has a la uh, a, a huge amount of employees okay they have a large number of employees then processing their payroll is itself is like very difficult okay because assume that you have 1000 employees each employee will have a different salary package okay each employee will have uh, different leaves okay they have to have taken different holidays okay each of them would have worked on a different overtime scale okay so some of them would have worked better so they will get incentives some of them will not work better so they have their salary will be like cut okay see so many complications are there okay so if thousand employees are there okay the salary is going to be so unique for each and every one of them it's not going to be the same okay mostly if there are a thousand people maximum there will be like 100 different types of salaries which has to be paid okay so what happens here is we should have a format and we should have a procedure to do it okay so this is explained in terms of a factory where the employees are hardly paid okay it's not in an office setup where the monthly payment is made it's like hardly uh, hardly wage rate payment is made okay so the sequence works like this first the hr okay should find out how many hours they have worked so this information comes from the production department okay then he asks hr asks the production department okay is there any overtime so that overtime record has to be has to move from production department to the hr department okay the hr will then ask the uh, will have his own record about what is the payment okay what is the payment rate okay because when once hr appoints someone they will usually know what is the rate at which they are appointing them okay what's the hourly rate or monthly rate that they are appointing them so they have that record okay so now they will use both this information the total hours worked plus overtime worked into the pay rate they will get the pay calculated so after the pay is calculated they will pay some of the amount as pf as tax okay or esi they have to pay and after this payment is made the net amount is transferred to the employee so 
up to the pay calculation only hr can handle it okay once the hr has found out this is this is what the pay is okay and this is to be deduction and this is to be the net pay to the employee this information is like then transferred to accounts department so accounts department is is the one which pays for the tax pays for the esi pays for the pf okay and thereafter the balance amount will directly be paid to the employee's account okay so see here even if it's for a simple pay okay simple salary calculation see how so many departments are involved here okay so the production department is involved in these two okay hr is involved in these two accounting is involved in these two and also the bank is involved the employee's account is involved okay so this system ensures that the payment of salary is like very smooth flowing so let's see in detail how this works the main stages <coughs> in payroll system and the issues to be considered are as follows hardly paid employees will record details of hours worked this is usually done by using clock cards time cards punch cards on a machine records starting and finishing times of work okay for example now we have this rfid okay or this uh, <coughs> thumb thumb scanner okay so every employee who comes to the work he has to press the thumb scanner his thumb is like scanned okay then only he will come to the company okay and at the time of going outside of the company he will again have to give a thumb impression so the in time and out time is noted by this kind of a machine earlier we had concepts called as <coughs> clock cards or time cards or punch cards okay now we don't have that kind of things it's like now much simply on automated here okay so hours worked is usually uh, recorded by the supervisor and it has to be authorized and signatured by the by the production supervisor or the production manager and production manager should also say that the total amount of overtime recorded then the pay calculation will be made by the hr okay and the pay is calculated like this hours into rate okay or if it's a if it's a monthly salary it's a monthly rate okay if calculated manually someone else should check a few of the transactions okay so if it's going to be like manually calculated there is a chance that the hr might purposely might create a higher salary for someone okay or by mistake he would do so if there are thousand employees at least some 50 employees salary should be randomly checked to ensure that fraud and error is minimized okay deductions made all the tax social security pf esi is like taken out okay this is taken out from something called as a gross pay okay once we have taken out that is called as net pay okay that is called as net pay the net pay is usually transferred to the employee by the accounts department okay so occasionally some sometimes it can be cash but mostly it is it is only in terms of employee back accounts okay so that employee has a proof of how much he has received okay company has a proof of how much they have transferred supervision is required to prevent the theft if it's going to be given through cash and employees should sign an acknowledgement of the receipt of cash okay so they also have to accept it okay so this is how a, a payroll system gets operated okay so even when you go for you when you go for a company this is how it gets operated okay see as an exercise what you do is next time when you buy something from amazon okay you you will get an invoice okay check that invoice like what are the details they have it okay they also have a process like a uh, sales process every company has a process okay when you buy something when you sell something when you work for a company everywhere there is a process okay because process ensures that the work is like moving smoothly okay so that's about the concept here so thank you for watching this video we'll meet in the next video